Hey everybody, it's Corey. Thank you for joining me. Um, I owe you an apology. I've been quite sick over the last week and have not been able to do my normal stat um, research and, and video that I do every week. So we're gonna put that off until next week. Fortunately, I was working on a video prior to getting sick that I'm gonna present to you now. And it has to deal with porcupine properties and I'll develop that concept here in a minute. So I'm known in my family as Captain Joykill. I'm the adult in the room that when he goes to a party, he's always pointing out stuff nobody else wants to see. It's just my nature. And lately, I've been getting a lot of phone calls from a lot of you asking how the market's doing and you're excited about jumping into the spring market. And you've heard that inventory is up and prices are down. And I've been telling you that it's true. Inventory is up and prices are down. But I also have to tell people that does not necessarily translate into you having more houses to look at and then get a lower price when you do find it. But I want to set the context by sharing a simple story with you. Over the last three to five years, you've had five guys at a bar sitting in front of a bowl of that trail mix that you get at Costco. And that trail mix is, you know, it's got the raisins and the M&Ms and the peanuts and the almonds and the cashews, right? Those five guys sitting at the bar over the last couple of years in our market, they've just been grabbing the, the handful of the trail mix and throwing it in their mouth. They're, they've had this insatiable appetite for trail mix. Well, now the market is more like there's only three guys at the bar and that bowl is still there. But rather than reaching in and grabbing with an insatiable appetite, that trail mix, they're sitting at the bar and they see there, there's only two other guys. And they start picking through the trail mix and picking out the stuff that they want. And what are they picking? They usually go for the M&Ms first, right? And then they might go for the cashews and then the almonds. And eventually they eat the raisins. And what's typically left is the peanuts. And the bartender sees that as these three are picking through the bowl, it starts to deplete. And the bartender comes and she dumps more trail mix in. And the guys all continue to do what they do. They pick, they pick, they pick. And after a couple rounds of this, the bowl changes its consistency into mostly peanuts. That's what's going on in our market right now. We've got a, a market that has just had peanuts stay on the market. More homes come on the market, buyers pick through them. And eventually our inventory is changing into a peanut inventory, the stuff that's left over. And I also call those porcupine properties. And I know those are a lot of analogies, but analogies help me learn. That's how I, how I teach. So hopefully that will help you. So we're going to get into this video and I'm going to develop the concept of what a porcupine property is. And then I'm going to take you into the MLS and I'm going to show you just how graphic it is that there is no inventory on the properties that everybody wants. There's plenty of inventory on those peanut or porcupine properties that nobody wants to touch. Well, let's get into it. At the end of February, the amount of inventory or homes for sale was up 130% at 804. Now this is where it's very important to identify why the inventory is increasing. One reason it is not increasing, which is where you wanna see it increase, is on new homes coming onto the market. That is not happening. People are not listing their homes because they have incredibly low interest rates. Builders are not producing the same amount of homes that they did prior to the pandemic. And what you have is a two year lag of new listings hitting the market. So how can you have inventory go up while listings are down? Over the last two years, you basically have had 30% fewer buyers engaged in the market. And with that 30% fewer people buying in the market, there are tends to be homes that pass through. And it looks like this. You have 376 new listings come on the market. 311 buyers stepped to the plate, went under contract, and those went into escrow. And then 65 homes did not sell, and they carry over into the next month. So month over month, you're having these carryover properties that, that are stacking up and creating an inventory increase. We have to ask ourselves, why are these properties carrying over? And the answer is very simple. They're porcupine properties. Let's take a look at what makes a porcupine property. There are basically four quills, four things that poke buyers away from a house. The first is location. 
The buyer that wants to buy in Coeur d'Alene is not going to be interested in any listing that's in Pulse Falls, Rathdrum, or Hayden. So anything outside of Coeur d'Alene is a porcupine property to that buyer. On the smaller scale, location matters in this. Does that house back up to a freeway? Does that house back up to a railroad track? Is that house under an airport landing strip? Is that house on a main thoroughfare into a neighborhood? The other thing that, that bites people as far as location is neighbors. Are the neighbors unsightly? Do you have a two-story home behind that house that's looking into the backyard? These location things really cancel out properties quite quickly. And I will demonstrate that here in just a minute. The second prickly uh, property disqualifier is layout. Obviously, a lady that wants an open concept kitchen is not going to want a galley kitchen. A galley kitchen is a porcupine property to her. When we're talking about layout, we're talking about stairs. Two thirds of everybody wanting a house right now wants a house without stairs. The third prickly property uh, or quill in a, in a porcupine property is move in readiness. If a house is move in ready, it tends to go a lot quicker than one that needs improvement. People don't want to put money in into, a, into remodeling a home, especially after they've scraped every dime just to get into the house. So these houses that need a lot of work tend to pass on and carry through. And the fourth reason that a house is a porcupine property in our market is price. You get people that sellers that are putting porcupine properties onto the market, expecting people to pay top dollar. And that's just simply not going to happen. The price has to be right in our market. And if the price is too high and there's a lot of them, those homes are going to carry on into the next month. That's how you have inventory stacking up. It's not because new homes are coming onto the market. What's happening is you have this concentration of porcupine properties adding up, adding up, adding up, adding up. But the people that are putting houses on the market that are mainline, you know, those single level homes that everybody wants, those are going quick and they're going for top dollar. Now, what I want to do is demonstrate for you in real time what we're talking about when we talk about porcupine properties and how inventory dries up fast. Let's check it out. This is our MLS system. And you can see currently right now, the inventory of all residential properties is 1,001. And you can see our area covers the five counties of the northernmost part of Idaho. And all these green dots are your residential properties. This does not include vacant land. These are just properties with homes on them. And we have currently 1,001. Nice round number for us. Okay. The typical buyer right now, median price is 480 because that's where most people are gravitating towards. So let's assume that you're going to come into town and we're going to go look for houses this weekend. Let's see how many houses we can look at. You're Mr. and Mrs. Typical Buyer. Okay, so you've been pre-approved for the median price home, which is 480. We're going to look at homes both below and above that price point to give us a, a wide hopper in which to look at. So we're going to set our price point at 450 because remember our price is 480 that we're approved for. So we're gonna look at 450 on the low end and 500 on the high end. Who knows, we might be able to get a seller to come down in price. And just by setting our terms of price right here, from 450 to 500, our inventory went down to 81. Okay, well, where do we wanna live? Obviously, you're not gonna just live anywhere in this North Idaho area. Up here in Bonners Ferry, you're two and a half hours away from Spokane, two hours away from Coeur d'Alene, most people, the typical buyer right now that we're seeing, want to live within a half hour of Coeur d'Alene. So let's go ahead and set those parameters. We'll get rid of this. We'll set new parameters. And let me back out here. So a half hour from Coeur d'Alene would take us up to Spirit Lake right about here, all the way down to about Worley on the south end of the lake. And then it would take us to the east side of the lake right just before Harrison, over into the Silver Valley, right around Cataldo, and then up to Bayview. So this little box that we've created is a half hour from Coeur d'Alene. And the reason people want to live in Coeur d'Alene or a half hour from Coeur d'Alene is because your work, your health care, your amenities for the kids, your entertainment, your big box stores, all the stuff that most people think of when they think quality of life, are right here in the Spokane Coeur d'Alene metro area. So most people want to be a half hour from that. That's why we're choosing that. 
you can see by setting that box, we're down to 54 homes. What we haven't done yet is choose the type of home. The typical buyer right now, you guys, that wants to move into a home in North Idaho, two thirds of them want a home with no stairs. Why? Because a large per percentage of your buyers are retired or getting close to retirement, and they also have parents that they want to incorporate into their household. So two thirds of the people that want to buy homes want a single story home or at least a home with main level living where they don't have to use stairs to get to the laundry, the kitchen or the master bedroom. So let's set those parameters. You want a single level home, we'll even compromise for a single level with a daylight or basement. And we'll even compromise with a single level home with a, maybe a bonus room above the garage. Let's go ahead and set those parameters. And you can see our inventory has gone down to 34. So we'd have 34 homes to look at this weekend. Cool. Well, hold on. Let's set our bedrooms up. Most people want a minimum of three bedrooms. We'll set that up. Most people want a minimum of two bathrooms. Let's set that up. Most people do not want to go below 1,500 square feet. That tends to be too small. So we'll set 1,500 square feet. We're not even going to touch acreage because price will pretty much dictate the type of acreage we get. And it's basically a city lot. Um, and then here's where you find a lot of people gravitate towards um, three-car garages. So let's go ahead and set that up. And again, this is your typical buyer. Everybody wants a three-car garage to start. And to throw, throw it in, you know, in North Idaho, we have boats and ATVs and stuff. And people like to have RV parking. So let's go ahead and set that up, RV parking. And if you look at your inventory, we've gone from 1,001 to one. There is one house with these parameters that we set up. And again, guys, let's review. We did not ask for anything abnormal. This is what your typical buyer wants. A home between 450 and 500,000, a single level or a single level home with a basement or a bonus room, main level living, minimum of three bedrooms, minimum of two bathrooms, 1,500 square feet and up, a three car garage with some RV access. And there's one house within a half hour cord lane that qualifies for that. But let's look at it. Maybe this is the one house worth looking at. So we'll bring it up and we can see it's on Worth Drive in Coeur Lane. That's a really good neighborhood. That's in the landings. So looks like a great property, right? You got four bedrooms, three bath, almost 1600 square feet on a large city lot. Um, it does have CCNR. So if you didn't want CCNRs, this is gonna be a porcupine property for you. You're not gonna wanna touch it. But let's take a look at something else here. Let's look on the map. I'm going to zoom into the listing and see if there's any prickly porcupine issues. So let's zoom out. Let's put it on satellite image. Here's your house in the, in the, the blue star here. Let's zoom in. You can see, great, three-car garage. It's got RV access. It's got a great big yard. But here is the problem. This is why this is a porcupine property, and this is why it's going to carry over into the next month. It's on Prairie Avenue behind the house. Prairie Avenue is the main east-west corridor, second only to I-90. This is a huge highway back here. There's cars going 55 to 75 miles an hour. It's the main thoroughfare between Coeur Lane and Post Falls. It is not a freeway, and you're going to hear this like a freeway, and that's why this house is a porcupine property. Also, you notice these power poles. These are high tension electrical lines, and you can even see it in the photo of the home here. Look at the power lines going over the backyard. So this is a porcupine property, and why? Because it has a location behind a highway with high power lines in the backyard, and nobody wants to have that. So this is an example of the perfect home that gets ruled out because of one prickly issue, and that's location. It backs up to that highway. Okay, so what we're going to do now is reverse engineer this stereotypical, very common desire list for your common buyer and take away some of the, the, the sexy items that make these properties popular. The first thing we're going to get rid of is a, is a three-car garage. So let's reduce that down to a two-car garage, and you can see the inventory is going to go up to three. The RV parking, that's killing us. Let's take that off. Maybe we can do with a two-car garage and no RV access. And take that off, and your inventory goes up to 15 properties. So we now have 14 more properties to look at just by taking RV access 
and reducing it down to a two-car garage. Okay, we'll take a house that has multi-levels. Let's just go with that, see what we have. Just by adding homes with multi-levels, now we're up to 28 properties. So there you have it. This is the difference between a porcupine property and one that everybody wants. The one everybody wants, there is one listing. A porcupine property that has a little bit more prickly issues. It's got stairs. It doesn't have RV access. It's only got a two-car garage. Those prickly properties, they're there for the taking. There's 28 of them. The homes that are carrying over are not the popular mainline sexy homes that everybody wants. The homes that are carrying over month to month and they're stacking up are the ones nobody wants to touch because they're prickly.